what we think is over. We'll have an opening prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day, Lord Father God. Thank you for watching over us through the night, Lord Father God. Thank you for taking care of us all through the week, Lord Father God. We come here this morning to praise your name and lift it up in the powerful name of Jesus, Lord Father God. Oh, let the Holy Spirit go to this sanctuary this morning, Lord Father God. Let us feel your power and your strength and your might, Lord Father God. Let the word that come out this morning, Lord, hit somebody else in here. And outside these doors, Lord Father God. We know you're still in charge of everything that's going on, Lord Father God. No matter what it is, sickness, health, finances, anything that's going on, we know you still gonna take care of it because you have been in charge of it all. Yeah. We just praise your holy name. Praise and we come to say we love you, Lord. Yeah. And we just come to praise you. Lift your name up high, Lord Father God. If we ought to be lifted up high above the clouds, Lord Father God. Yeah. Look down on us this morning, Lord Father God. Say that you're looking at us. We know you're looking at us every day, Lord. You're watching over us through every, every step of the way. And we know that you, whatever you do, Lord Father God, we just give you praise and honor and the glory. And say thank you. Amen. One more time. This is my prayer for my question. In holy name I pray. Amen. 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 The scripture will be coming from Psalm 32, 6 to 11. And everyone that is God, pray unto thee in the time when thou mayest be found surely in the floods of the great water, they shall not come night unto the day. Thou art in my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from the trouble. Thou shalt compass me about the songs of the river. So I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Be ye not the horse, but the mule, which had no understanding, whose mouth must be held to bit and bite. That they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be wicked, but he that trusted in the Lord's mercy shall come past in the dark. Be glad in the Lord, rejoice in the righteousness, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. May the Lord have a blessing you into the word. Now we have a welcome and announcement by Sister Portia. Amen. 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 And our announcements are as follows. Please join us for our weekly lineup of services. Sunday school is held each Sunday morning starting at 9.30 a.m. In-person worship begins at 11 a.m. each Sunday morning, but we will continue with temperature checks for wearing your mask. Please remember to bring your mask. Social distancing includes seating. Please do not sit shoulder to shoulder with parishioners that are not of the same household. And contact tracing. Our goal is to keep everyone as safe as possible while we enjoy in-person worship and fellowship. Thank you for your cooperation. Virtual worship will continue to be an option. Our virtual services starts at 11 a.m. streaming live on Facebook. Also, you can view our recorded services on the YouTube channel, Hoover Baptist Church. Bible study, Bible study is held on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. by way of conference call. The number to call in is 1-602-610-2079, when prompted enter the code 439-450. If you are a member of Goodwill, or you are a listener and friend of this ministry, and you would like to give an offering, we have several methods available. You can give by way of Venmo at Goodwill Baptist Church, Cash app, dollar sign, M-Y-G-W-B-C. You can mail your gift to P.O. Box 25561, Richmond, Virginia, 23260. If you require, require an alternate form to give your donation, please reach out to the trustees, James Smithers, Joan Jackson, or Serena Cupcake Archer. For your convenience, QR codes are posted and direct to you at other points in the sanctuary. This is to give you an easy access to the church giving app. If you are worshiping with us in person, you can use one of the apps provided to give your tithes and offering, or fill out your envelope and drop your tithes and offering in the offering box provided at the front. 
part of the church before or after service. Today is Death Sunday. Each Death Sunday, we give a special offering to our missionary ministry. If you would like to make a donation to the missionary ministry above your tithes and offering, please mark the envelopes accordingly. <coughs> Today, we and Pam from One Church, non perishable items, food items, will be available for all. We can, or we will be directed how to proceed to the lower auditorium. All missionaries of Google Baptist Church Church is asked to remain a few minutes after the morning service. The children and youth leaders are asking everyone to contact Sister Takesha Freeman or Sister Kaya Perry to give them a list of all youth and children achievements. Children and youth leaders are also asking your, our children and youth to see Sister Kaya Perry to sign up for the choir, praise dance teams, skit performance, and the step team. The children and youth will sponsor trips to the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Please see Sister Takesha Tremier, Sister Kylie Terry, or Sister Jackie Watkins for details. The trip date is November 25th, 2023. That concludes the announcements for the morning. Thank you. We have a song of praise. We got two. We got word from out there.
<laughs> you bring your big sister back over here. Amen. Because we miss her too. But good to see you. Amen. I see you come walking in. Amen. 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 Praise God for you. Amen. You must look good than the last time I seen you. I don't, do not remember you being that tall. Amen. Amen. But we praise God for you. But at least you stood. All right. All right. All right. I got a whole lot of money over there. <laughs> amen. Let's go. Amen. Amen. But y'all still, still going. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. And then, and then we got Keontae in the back. Amen. Let me hand up, brother. Amen. Man, I didn't see that. I didn't know you was here. I didn't know you was in town, man. Amen. Praise God for that. That's a good young man right there, y'all. Amen. That's a good young man. That's a good young man. That's a good young man. And God got some great things. In store for him, and we thank God. Who's, who's there beside you? Yeah, y'all thought that was your cousin Odell? Okay, okay, well, you need a big too. Hey, what y'all think them doing? Them good little boys. What the world? What the world? Them good little boys be eating. Amen. Hey, I don't know. Hey, man, but if your father ain't seen Odell since he was what? I mean, about eight, nine? Yeah, we ain't seen him in a minute. How old are you now, son? Seventeen. You mean by seventeen? Oh my God! I thought I missed a whole lot of money. I missed about twenty years old. Amen. Lord, so it, it, it really ain't been that long since we seen you. Pandemic and maybe a couple years before, but God bless you, man. Amen. Hey, God, God bless you, folks. Yeah. Let's take God for the first time, God. Amen. I'm telling you, when the good people get out the house. They doing whatever they do, amen. But they still decide to come back, amen. come back to, to a church where they used to go. And still a part of it. They're still a part of. But we don't know what they're doing at, you know, all the time. But they grown almost. They, they just, you ain't grown 17 year old, but anyway. Anyway, <laughs> you all know grown. But we thank God for you though. Right? Because they ain't have to come this way. And we praise God for them. We praise God for you. And we can show some love to you somewhere. We praise God that we have sowed the seeds into you somewhere, amen, that you ain't forgot it. Look, because you ain't forgot it, watch this, y'all. God ain't forgot you either. Come on, somebody. God ain't forgot you. God ain't forgot you, amen. I heard I heard that you was here a couple weeks ago, or at least last week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't wait to get back to see you, amen. I couldn't wait to see you. Amen, amen. I didn't know y'all was in town, amen, but good to see you. Why? Because I believe that God still got seeds for y'all guys. I believe God got a seed, a seed ready. You, you might get it today. I don't know when you'll get it. Amen. But God got a God got things He still wants to plant in you because there's still things that God wants to grow out of you. Come on, somebody. Come on, y'all. I still got some praise. Amen. 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 We wish you well in all your endeavors. Amen. We know God, God is blessing you all real good. Right? Amen. Well, I'm excited back. To be back, amen. We pray and praise God for um, God just bringing me through. I had a little like 48 hour bug or something, and I'm telling you, had me down for the count for a minute, amen. But we praise God that Reverend Wanda was able to come on that first week. Um, I called her on Saturday, and y'all know how I try to fight being sick, and I just said, Core, I can't do it, amen. I just can't do it. And um, I called Reverend Wanda real late on Saturday afternoon. And she responded to me so quickly, and she was here ready and with a ready word. That was a great word that day. Amen. We praise God for her, and we praise God for her again last week. She was scheduled last week, but she was here, and she doesn't mind serving with us. Amen. Amen. And bringing a word for us, and she is an a, a, a able, capable preacher. And I, I'm, I am always comfortable when I call her because I know. She's going to bring a word. Amen. Come on, somebody. And we, we thank God for that. And y'all heard last week it was announced about my buddy, my friend, Reverend Taylor. Mm -hmm. Reverend Taylor had, I, I'm telling you, I had to carry that bird. I was one of the few people that was given that bird because the family did not tell. Um, tell um, when he first went in the hospital, the family did not tell that for their reasons. And um, I was one of the few people they trusted with that, couldn't tell anybody. But all we could do was pray. And I'm here to tell you that, that God is an answer to our prayer. Come on, so God. God is an answer to our prayer. I'm going to be in the hospital just about two weeks. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what day it happened, but all of a sudden, God, He started talking. Oh, He started singing. Amen. He started getting on folk nerves. Amen. I said, He's back. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. He still got some um, rehab to do as far as physically, um, get his body right, and of course, get his rest. There's no time to bombard him with calls and, and trying to visit. It's, it's still a time for that. Amen. Amen. We want him to get completely well and be completely restored, but God is moving. God is moving. The Bible says, Yeah, do I walk with you even through the valley? Of the shadow of death, and God surely walked with yeah, him. Amen. Walked yeah. with his family. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I watched his family serve. I, amen. I watched his family pray. I watched his family praise God yeah. and stand strong in the knowledge that God is is good. We got to learn that. You know, like Job said, I, oh, no matter what, I know God is good. No matter what, I know God is good. When you when you adopt that mindset that no matter what, I know God is good. And God is not only good for me, God is good to me. When you adopt that mindset, you take one of, the, one of the enemy's greatest weapons away. You take that weapon away from him. You snatch that right out of his hand. So you would not allow him to curse your God and call you to curse your God. You don't know the power that is that is wielded in, in the spirit realm. But when you just say, "For God I live, for God I die," blessed be the name of the Lord. You don't know the power that comes out of it. if you could see it. If you could see it. If you could just see it, it's not a. a, a a nuclear bomb going <laughs> off in the heavens. It's like a nuclear bomb. The devil get blown back four, five blocks. Amen. Why? Because you have to took one of his greatest tools. Because the enemy go around telling the, telling God, they don't really love you. They only love you for what you gave. Why? They only yeah. love you for what you did. They only yeah. love you because because they, because you gonna put something in their pocket. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's what the enemy, he's the accuser of the brother. Man. But yeah. God said, not so. I believe in my child. Watch this. And when you when you going through, when you dealing with some stuff, when you dealing with your lowest point, Brother Charles, sometimes you deal with some stuff. You go through some stuff all by yourself, but you know what who is the God that you serve. You know that I love the Lord with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. Every gift that is within me, I praise yeah. the Lord. When you know that, the enemy got to take a backward step up off you. When you just speak the words out of your heart and, and, and apply the words in your life and walk that way, I'm here to tell you the enemy got no choice but to sit down and go somewhere. Go somewhere, say You got to go somewhere else. That's what Jesus did with them on Jesus. He put them in the pen. You got to go somewhere. You getting up out of here. Yeah, you got to right. go somewhere. That's, and that's how we got the power to command the enemy to leave us alone. We command yeah. the enemy to leave us alone, not just by saying it, but by getting closer to God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the yeah. Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, the enemy can't come where you have. Come on, somebody. I ain't going to preach. I ain't going to preach yet. Amen. You just give God some praise right there. You thank God today. Look, we're gonna prepare for our prayer time. Deacon um Truth there is gonna come and um and um and lead us in prayer. Let me say this too. So proud of Goodwill yesterday because they they went to we went, amen, to help honor um on, on Reverend Sherman Hudson, but it's a surprise banquet. I don't know how you pull up a surprise banquet, amen, but they did it. And he was surprise, 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 amen, amen. But but it was beautiful and it was so it was so beautiful to me. See goodwill there, amen. We had a table, y'all. Amen. Amen. We had a table, and we thank God for that. We were there to help honor and celebrate. So I just thank you for those of you that traveled all the way out to Zion's Crossroads. Amen. Amen. You, you might say, I don't know where that is, right? I know you don't. Know, and we probably still don't know where that is. Amen. We got that. Amen. Amen. But we got that. We praise God for that. Come on, get the truth that she's going to come. Amen. She's going to lead us in prayer. We just want to remember. Um, um, our sister shut in. Of course, we want to remember, amen, the family of those that have lost loved ones, still praying for our sister Violet Julius and her family. Amen. I want to continue to lift up and pray. Um, I know it's been a few weeks, but Sister Alice Johnson lost her brother. We just don't get over stuff like that. It's real quick, amen, amen. These are people near and dear to your heart. And everybody who has lost somebody, I might be missing somebody, Charlie, to my head, not my heart, absolutely. I uh, want to continue to lift up and pray for. Um, Reverend Taylor, that God continue to restore him. I can't wait for the testimony. 
Oh, I want to be there. I, look, look, the first Sunday he back, the first Sunday he preached, y'all know y'all might not see me that Sunday because I got to be there. I, I got to be there for that testimony, y'all. I'm telling y'all. Amen, amen. I got to be there for that testimony. Amen. But God is, God is working a mighty work in, in him. We, and, and we continue to lift him up in prayer. Amen. I want to remember, amen, amen. Um, um, all of our sick and such, uh, Tracy, Bob, and Tracy is gross. Tracy's not sick. We just always pray for Tracy. Amen. Amen. I want to continue to pray for Sister Jeanette. Amen. Um, Stevenson, um, Sister Felicia Blackwell, Sister Barbara Bullock, Sister Mala Shelton, Sister um, Molly Bell, continue to lift her up. Amen. Amen. Sister Barbara Rogers, she's not here today, but she's okay. Amen. 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 But thank God. God heard her. Amen. Amen. We're praying mightily for her again. I want to continue to lift up Sister Deborah Brown. And we just keep on pressing on with her and continue to pray for Brother Charles Rockins. Amen. Amen. Charles, I told you I got I, I got to talk to you. Amen. I got some stuff I need you to do. Amen. As soon as you get strong, amen. Amen. We're gonna have you doing it. I just want you to know that that be an encouragement to you. God better work for you, sir. Amen. 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 And you shall not falter. And you shall not fail. And you shall go forth. Amen. 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 Am
Lord, we will find to God, amen, our Father, to Jesus, Jesus, the Son, and to the Blessed Holy Ghost. It is, it is my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you, each and every leader that's here serving and, and working. Um, thank you. Thank you to our great worship leader. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Let's give our worship leader a hand today. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. In his, in his support. Amen. I can always count on you to lead. Amen. Amen. If I need prayer, boy, here we go. Amen. Amen. Oil in hand, ready to go. Ready to 
and lock it down. But Lord, we praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Continue to lift up and praise God for all of our, our servant leaders that are here. Blessing the kingdom of God. Amen. Y'all make it happen. Amen. And I've been so proud. I'm so proud of each and every one of you, the deacons and the trustees and the other ministry leaders. We are excited and pleased, and as pleased as can be. Amen. That we serve, that we serve God at a great church like the Gold Mill Baptist Church. Located at 410 North Monroe Street in Richmond's historic Jackson Ward. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise for that. Amen. Amen. And then we're going to call your attention today to the book, uh, the, to the book of 2 Timothy. Amen. 2 Timothy um, chapter 1. Just going to read a few verses in your hearing. And uh, we don't know how this sermon is going to end up. Amen. It's going to end up like the Lord said, end up. I might stop abruptly and sit myself right on down. Who knows what God is going to do today. Amen. But we know God's going to do something. We know God's going to do something. How do we know God's going to do something? Because we are in need of something. Each and every one of us that are here today are in need of something. And I know that God is the something fella. Amen. He's going to do it for you today. I just decree that right now. That God's going to do it for you today. Second Timothy, amen, chapter 1. If you have found it, please help me by help me honor God by standing to your feet if you are able. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. And it reads, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelleth first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in you, in thee also. Therefore, wherefore I put thee in remembrance to stir up the gift of God which is in thee by put by the putting on of hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. May the Lord ever add a blessing to the reading of his word, sanctify it in our hearts, therefore making it really good for our souls. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you right now. God, we thank you, God, that it is preaching time. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes preaching easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes hearing your word easy. And God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes doing your word real easy. And now, God, as your partner with me, uh, God, in, in this preaching hour, in this preaching moment, and God, let me preach with power, authority, conviction, and transparency. And God, as you, as you partner with me in this in this anointing, God, we pray that you partner with me in the covering of your covenant. Cover me, O oh God, with the blood, the precious blood of Jesus, that the enemy knows who I am and who not to mess with. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And the household of faith says, Amen. Amen. Today, for our time together in the Word of God, we just want to continue in the sermon series. And the theme for this year, amen, at the Good World Baptist Church, which is Trust the Process. Today's sermon title is It's In You. Amen. It's in you. You may be wondering just what I mean by that statement, it's in you. Huh? So let me explain. From a spiritual standpoint, the Lord has equipped you with what you need uh, to go to the next level uh, um, to complete the process in him. God has given you the ability to praise and worship your way through. You have the anointing. Uh, you have the spiritual intellect. Amen. You have the drive. You have a purpose. You have the plan. You have a victorious attitude. Uh, you have the healing that you need. Um, uh, and, and, and you have what, what you need. You, you have the ability to get what you desire in the Lord. You have the insight and the wisdom to get it done. See, Everything you need to succeed in Jesus' name is already in you. Whatever it is that you that you think you are missing, can I tell you today, with all the surety, it's already in you. Uh, you. You have to determine in yourself that you are that you're gonna trust the process and allow the Lord to bring it out of you. Come on, somebody. Um, the Lord has given each and every person ever born gifts and abilities uh, that are tied to the kingdom of God uh, and are designed uh, to bring glory unto God. Uh, abilities and gifts uh, um, that are for your success too. Amen. So you got to know, church, 
as saved believers in Christ. Uh, whatever it is that brings glory to God in your life, uh, oh, I cannot tell you that gets God's attention. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that a, that a person's gifts uh, will make room for them. Uh, see, this is not just with your fellow man, uh, but can I tell you, your gifts make room for you with God, too. Come on. Uh, oh, you better get that, y'all. Uh, there are some things about you uh, that God wants to use in places uh, where other Others may not fit. Somebody needs to know that your uniqueness, what people call your quirkiness, even is a blessing. Come on, somebody. See, when you are, when you willingly bring yourself and your gifts to God, you, dear man and kind sir, have become a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. See, that kind of service is one of devotion, affection, and love unto God. See, the sacrifice is a sacrifice that is that, I'm sorry, this sacrifice is a sacrifice that is about giving God the glory just because of, of who he is. See, this kind of sacrifice becomes a sweet-smelling savor unto God. See, God rewards that type of devotion by anointing or showing his pleasure with the sacrifice by accepting the sacrifice. In this case, what God is accepting when you give yourself to, to him, God is accepting you. Somebody need to praise God for that. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what's been going on in your life. Uh, amen. Other folk might not accept you. Uh, you might do the very best you can. Uh, and folk put down what you do as nothing. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, uh, God showed us even from the beginning uh, with Cain and Abel. Uh, if you do the best you can, God said, I'm real pleased with you. That's why he was able to accept Abel's sacrifice and not Cain. Cain didn't give him his best. Uh, Abel gave God his best. And look what God did. Uh, I'm just here to tell you uh, that when you give God your best, when you give him you, when you give him your time, when you give him your talent, amen, when you give him your treasure, amen, when you give him you, oh, can I tell you, God is well pleased, amen, see, look, God, God accepts you and me, oh, will we become sacrificed? Oh, give him the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. See, when you are saved by Christ and living for God, amen. See, this is what you are. This is what you have become. You have become a vessel, amen, oh, pleasing unto God that has in you what you need from God. See, somebody needs to know that it's already in you, amen. Amen. Oh, what can I tell you today? There's a potential problem with that. Uh, somebody say, uh oh, I knew it was a catch. Amen. See, here's the problem, y'all. If you don't know how to get the most out of what is in you, come on, somebody. Uh, that word potential. Amen. Can I tell you? I've learned from reading and studying, and amen, that potential is a bad word. Amen. Potential means that there's still yet something in you. Potential means, see, sometimes folks like to hear, oh, I, oh he got potential. But, well, okay, that's good to have potential. But what are you doing with potential? Amen. See, it's one thing to have potential, huh? and you got, because you can live and die with potential. Amen. But when I go away from here, I want folks to say, he got everything out of what God gave him. He wasn't much. He wasn't but five, eight and a half. I say five nine. He wasn't but five eight and a half. Amen. He his weight was up and down right there. It's a little down. That's good. Amen. Amen. He he wasn't the most eloquent person. Matter of fact, he was a stutterer standing up there trying to preach and tell, 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 tell people about God. Amen. Our man started with Amen. Amen. He was this. He, he wasn't the smartest. He didn't go that fine school. But boy, out of what God gave him, he yeah. used every bit of it. Amen. When I told him here, I want somebody to look at my family and say, that boy ain't got no potential. Good. I used everything that God had. I got out of me what God had put in me. Somebody need to praise God for that. Get out of you what God has put in you. And you're going to be the best that you can be. Amen. Can I tell you, if you don't know how to get that out of you, you will leave opportunities to do great. 
great work for the kingdom on the table. You'll leave great opportunities in life. The business that, you, that was in you to start, you ain't started. The book that was in you to write, you didn't write. Amen. Amen. Those things that you were supposed to accomplish, those people that you were supposed to impact, or if you don't get everything out of you and that's in you, you will leave people and left out. People that have been waiting on you because God put something in you for them. If you don't know how to get it out of you, Amen. you're going to miss some folks. Amen. See, the issue with some people is this. The enemy has subverted and diverted and perverted their purpose. Causing them to be frustrated uh, with the process and making it hard for them to trust the process of God. See, the enemy, Satan, has undermined the power, their power, that, look, uh, had changed their course and contaminated their thinking, amen, to the point that they, uh, that they no longer understand the potential of who and whose they are, causing a disconnection, uh, in them uh, from who God called them to be, uh, causing them to walk about uh, living beneath their privilege in God. Uh, what makes this so dangerous is that through the trickery of the devil, uh, those that have been uh, hoodwinked, bamboozled, uh, led astray, and lied to uh, find themselves no longer giving God the glory uh, with their lives. Amen. Uh, oh, they may try. Oh, they may try with their mouth, amen, but trying to muster up shouts of hallelujah and praise the Lord and praying prayers that lack power and conviction for the person that has lost connection with God. This is this is like sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. They may try like Samson after, after he gave in to Delilah and tried as Samson did to shake themselves to see if the effects of the glory are still evident in their lives. <clears throat> but but they will soon find themselves powerless before uh, the onslaught of the enemy, uh, wondering what and where uh, it all went wrong. Church, uh, it does not have to be so. Uh, you are created. Uh, you are created for increase. Uh, you are created for growth. Amen. Uh, you are created uh, to last. Uh, amen. Not be last, but to last until the end. Uh, the race is not given to the swift, neither to the strong, but what? He that endures to the end. Uh, so you're created to last. Uh, you have to trust the process and see the victory won in every area of your life. All oh, you got, y'all, you got what it takes uh, is in you. And watch this. Uh, what God has given you uh, does not have to ever evaporate. Uh, it does not ever have to dissipate. Uh, see, church, God's best is already inside of you. Uh, but if you want to keep getting it all out of you uh, so you can maximize what God uh, has planned for you, uh, uh, there is more you must do. Uh, can I tell you, we're talking in the spiritual realm, but this apply. Can I tell y'all something? Everything you do in the spirit affects what you do in the natural. Come on, somebody. Right. There are lessons that you learn in, in, in the spirit. There are lessons that you learn in your spirituality. There are lessons that you learn in your relationship with God. Can I tell you that you can apply to every day like that? We testify real quick. Amen. Amen. I do things, amen, outside of here all the time. Some of y'all see my Facebook page. After I, after I work out with my trainer, I always post a lesson from the gym. Because there's something that can happen in the gym, in the mix of my struggles, amen. And God knows sometimes I'll be in that thing struggling, amen. In the midst of my struggle, in the gym, amen. God, give me a word. And, me, and thank God my trainer is a Holy Ghost field, fire baptized preacher just like me. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Amen. I got to record this real quick. And I get in my phone and I hit the record button and I. And I put that thought down, what the Lord had gave me about the gym. It'd be a spiritual word coming from. Coming from behind that iron, amen. <laughs> See, I get something from God no matter where I am. I could be in the grocery store and I see a lesson. I got a look, I could be at work and I see a lesson from God. And can I tell you, because because this natural world, because I am a spiritual being, serving a spiritual God, that everywhere I walk, I walk in the spirit. I don't care if I'm on the look, if I play football, I be playing football in the spirit, amen. I'm a businessman. I do business in the spirit. I look. I work with a um. 
I work with disadvantaged kids. I, I do that. I better do that in the spirit before I knock somebody out. Amen. But I do that in the spirit. I don't just get in the spirit when I come to church. I live in the spirit because I live in God. Come on, somebody. You want to learn. You really want to learn how to tap into your innermost resources. Be all you can be. Huh? You got to start with your spirit. Amen. Yeah. You got to build your spirit up. You got to build your spirit up. Huh? See, that's why we teach our kids. I know a lot. Y'all here? I gotta use them. Amen. <laughs> amen. That's why we teach our kids. Yes, sir. That's why we teach our kids. Amen. In the church. That's why we give our kids opportunity in the church. That's why we get our kids. Put them up front. Do your thing, baby, because you know in church, you're going to get an amen. Go ahead, baby. You, uh, let the Lord use you. You know you're going to get all that. And some of that stuff sound corny. Amen. When you run, they know I'm messing up. They know I'm messing up. They keep on encouraging right. me. They encouraged me until I started believing I was good at it. Amen. I was like, oh my God, I'm saying off key. Y'all know I sing off key now. Amen. I'm saying off key, doing everything off key. But they didn't go ahead, baby. Amen. And they did it until I believed it, until my confidence got up. And when my confidence got up, when I was willing to stand up, God could stand up in me. Come on, somebody. I'm going to tell you, this is why we teach our kids. Amen. So they understand how good it is to serve the Lord. How good it is to be spiritual. It's good to be spiritual. I remember her. I remember that a 14, 15 year old boy. There was always trouble around Fairfield Court. Amen. There was always trouble to get in. Amen. Right, right there around there. Amen. And I remember, amen, there was that there were times, amen, when they, when I just felt led to leave. So y'all go. I'm out. And, 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 and then I would, and then they would come back. I see them uh, a day later or a couple hours, two hours later. They say, "Hey man, you good? You love man? Man, 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 we got in all kind of trouble, man. But how do you know? I don't, I don't know. I just felt like I ain't want. I ain't, I just felt like I ain't want to do no more. I just felt like I just need to go somewhere. I just need to leave. And and, and it got so I was not saved. I'm telling you, I was not saved. But somebody prayed for me, and and, and, it, and it got so. Then when trouble would get ready to jump off, somehow I would just be like, hey, I'm gone. Me, me and another, we put our problem right now. We would just be gone. We would just be And then, and, and so much trouble was happening. And I kept wondering, I said, Lord, you know, they're my boys. Why am I not getting in trouble like they get in trouble? And that was because my mom was praying for me. I don't know about nobody else. Because, look, she was praying for me, and she had put some stuff in me that even when I wasn't serving the Lord, the Lord was still pulling on me. And I'm here to tell you, I know some of y'all, some of y'all that experience that right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that Lord, that Lord is pulling on you. <laughs> now sometimes you get ready to go one way and the Lord just check your spirit. Why? Because whatever in God has put in you, whatever God has put in your spirit, it has not left you. Right. It has not left you. Yeah. It, it, it is like a homing device. It's like a tracker. Amen. It has not left you. God know where you at every minute, every moment. God know where you at, know what you're doing, and know what you did not do. How many of y'all ever been getting ready to do something? You heard your grandma voice. Oh my God. I heard, I heard my grandma voice. Oh, oh. I didn't hear my grandma. I mean, skip one and go on to grandma. But well, you know it's serious then, boy. I'm telling you. It's, you want it though? <laughs> Amen. That's God. Amen. And can I tell you that the spiritual realm. Amen. You need the spirit of God. Can I tell you? Salvation is but the first step. So you got to get saved. See, in this process, in this process of, of, of being what the Lord has called us all to be, uh, uh, you, you have to get saved. If you make up your mind that I want to be all that God has for me, you got to be saved. So look, that's the first step. Uh, follow me into this word today, because we're going to explore some more. See, in our text, Paul knows, knows what is in Timothy, amen. Paul's mission with Timothy is to convince, is to show, and to motivate Timothy, amen, to the same understanding. See, as Timothy had Paul to minister to him and to show him how to look towards the Lord. And I'm saying this without boasting in all humility. You help me, amen. It is my job to be the pastor to you after the very heart of God, to lead you and to feed you in knowledge and in understanding. And watch this, 
and keep pointing you towards Jesus and help you use what is inside of you for the Lord. And can I tell you that I know some of what is already inside each and every one of you. I also know that some of you have not even begun, amen, to tap into the power that God has for you. But I believe that that's about to change in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, as we trust in God's process for us. See, our text offers, amen, some very good advice of how, of how to of how you should get the most out of what's in you for the Lord. Simply put here, my first thing, you just got to remember, amen, you got to remember your relationship with the Lord is key. Oh, look at verse 5, oh, amen, look at verse 5, Paul tells Timothy that I, that I will call to your remembrance. See, that's a good pastor right there. He's telling Peter, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, telling Timothy that I'm going to call to your remembrance. I want you to remember that unfeigned faith, amen. See, uh, Timothy had a faith, uh, amen. Timothy had faith. Uh, he grew up around faith, amen. Uh, as he witnessed strong faith uh, from his mama and from his grandmama. Uh, can I tell you today, parents, uh, don't think your kids uh, are not watching, amen. Uh, they learn, uh, they learn, uh, they learn to operate and to trust in God uh, by watching your relationship with God uh, and with others. Uh, see, that's why your kids can go off from around you uh, and still move in God even without you because uh, they're seeing your example, amen. Uh, see, Paul saw that in Timothy here. Uh, he saw that unfeigned faith. Uh, Paul was speaking of uh, a sincere of faith. Can I tell you, oh, don't nobody get this twisted. You don't need mountain-sized faith to move mountains. You don't need mountain-sized faith to move mountains. Uh, Jesus said you can have faith uh, the size of a grain uh, of a mustard seed uh, to say to this mountain, be thou removed from this place to another place. I'm here to tell you, you don't need mountain-sized faith. Uh, see, some of y'all might be thinking, man, I don't have a whole lot of faith. Uh, hey, man, I don't know what it is to have a lot of faith. My faith is small. Sometimes I don't know what to believe. Uh, you know who to believe in. Come on, somebody. Uh, and look, uh, when you put your faith in God, uh, your faith is multiplied way more uh, than it can ever be just in you. Uh, see, that's a childlike faith. Uh, see, that's the kind of faith that it takes to get saved. Uh, a simple childlike faith, uh, that sincere faith uh, was not an agenda-based faith or uh, uh, just to get something, but that faith uh, was about believing in uh, and committing to the Lord uh, for no other reason than just, just the fact that he was God. See, that sincere faith was about seeking first the kingdom of God. This sincere faith was about pleasing God. This sincere faith was about serving God without ulterior motive of what can I get, but an attitude of what can I give unto the Lord. See, if you want to get if you want to get out of you what is that sign of you, you got to remember all that pure simple faith in the Lord. Then our text point points to the Points out to us, amen, that, that if you want to know how uh, to get out of you what is in you, uh, but then you got to remember again, amen. Uh, you, but this time, you got to not only remember all uh, oh, your faith, uh, but now you got to remember what the Lord has already done. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, in verse 6, uh, it says, Wherefore, well, I put thee in remembrance, uh, amen, in remembrance, uh, that thou stir up the gifts of God, uh, which, is, which is in thee uh, by the putting on of my hands. Uh, can I tell you? You, you got to remember uh, that you are special uh, from the beginning of your life. Uh, amen. Uh, you got to remember uh, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made uh, according to the will, the plan, and the ways of God. Uh, as a part of that will, uh, God, uh, uh, as a part of that will, uh, God in 1 Timothy 2 and 4 says, uh, Amen. Uh, it lets us know uh, that it is the desire of God uh, for everybody to be saved. Uh, how important is your salvation? Well, can I tell you, uh, salvation uh, is what caused God uh, to connect his will to you, uh, to your uh, to your ability, uh, to enable you to be able uh, to give him the glory. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 13 says, uh, says that in him, uh, you also, uh, uh, when you have heard the word uh, of the truth, uh, the gospel of your salvation uh, and you believed in him uh, you were sealed uh, by the promised 
Holy Ghost. Amen. See that measure, this measure of the Holy Spirit that is in you, it was to seal you, to identify you all as belonging to Christ and as his own. Some of us might wonder, I ain't supposed to be ad living today, but I got to. Some of us might be wondering how in the world that I have this ability. How in the world do I have that ability? How in the world have I made it thus far? It is because because you have been sealed by the Holy Ghost and God has put you in a package and he's wrapped you up real tight and God has said I'm going to preserve you until I get you to the place where I want you to be I'm going to preserve you I'm going to keep you I'm going to hold on to you I'm going to bless you see look I know some of y'all might want me to stop right there amen because they think I made my point I told you that you were sealed by the Holy Holy Ghost, amen. I told you, amen, that there's something showing up in me, amen, in you, amen. But can I tell you, being sealed by the Holy Ghost and knowing you're sealed by the Holy Ghost is just the beginning, amen. We were not ever meant to stop right there. I tell you, it's good to be sealed by the Holy Ghost. It is good to know God. It is good to know him in the fullness of his spirit and in the fullness of his love. But God wants you to know him in the fullness of his power. Because see, God said that I have not given you all the spirit of fear, amen, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. See, God said that I got more in you. See, there's enough in you right now, amen. There's enough enough for you right now huh, to change the whole world. Huh. There's enough in you. Huh. There's enough power in you. Huh. There's enough love in you. Huh. There's enough in you to change the world. Huh. There's enough in you to make a difference wherever you are. Huh. There's, enough in, there's enough in you huh, to be all that you can be. Huh. But in order for you to get that thing out, huh, you got to move beyond being sealed. Huh. Amen. I like, look, I like cheese. I love provolone. Amen. 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 And when it comes, it comes sealed in a package. But as long as it stays sealed, it can't get on my steak and cheese sandwich. As long as it's sealed, it can't get in my egg. But when I take it off the seal, I can use it. I want you to get that when you take it off the seal. See, some of us, amen, we have been sealed. And we've been satisfied to be sealed. We've been satisfied to be members of the church. We've been been satisfied for our name to be on the road. We've been satisfied that I come to church once a week. We've been satisfied. Lord, it's sit here and get fed, but it's time not to be satisfied. You've got to learn to be unsatisfied. You can't be satisfied with doing the same old, same old. You can't be satisfied with having the same testimony. You can't be satisfied with having the same word. You need a fresh word, and you need Need a fresh anointing. Huh? I'm here to tell you, huh? there's more in you. Huh? See the seal huh? is to let you know huh? that there's something there. Huh? See the seal of God huh? is to whet your appetite for even more. Huh? See the seal of God and salvation huh? is to get you ready huh? for what God got for you. Huh? See the seal of God works like this. It works like a cleansing of the palate. You know, my wife is always watching these cooking shows and these little shows where they gotta take stuff and eat stuff. You know what they do when they want to cleanse their palate? They take a peppermint or a sprig of parsley or even a sip of water and swirl it around. Amen. They drink that or eat that so their palate can be cleansed. So when they taste the next meal, they don't have the residue. They don't have the residue of what they ate before. Can I tell you? Oh, before you get saved. The only, the only thing in your mind and in your heart is iniquity. I'm here to tell you. You might say, I'm a good person, amen. But before you get saved, you are a sinner, amen. You are a sinner. You were born in sin. And you were shaped in iniquity, amen. But when God saved you, see, God.
God wants to cleanse your palate. God wants to get that taste of sin out of your mouth, out of your spirit, out of you spiritually. He wants to get that taste of sin out of you so you can understand that there are some more from God that I need. So when you get saved, it's just like cleansing your palate. And a cleansed palate is ready to receive something new, something exciting, something tasty. I'm here to tell somebody right now, you need to get your palate cleansed. And once your palate is cleansed, you are ready to taste and see. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Somebody, anybody ready to taste and see? Just how good God is. I'm just here to tell you right now, when you get your palate cleansed, you are ready to taste and see that the Lord is good. And look, it would God get even good. God has given you power, but the power is within you, and you need to get it out. You need something to go down into deep into the resources of you and pull off the good things that God has for you. The Bible says in our text, for I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. God has put some things in you that you I didn't know you had. You didn't know how much love you had in you, but God put it there. You didn't know how much power you had, but God put it there. You didn't know how much boldness you had, but God put it there. You didn't know how much praise was in you, but God put it there. You didn't know how much prayer was in you, but God put it there. You didn't know how much anointing that was within you but God put it there but what God did not put in you was fear to you what he gave you he ain't put no fear in you can I tell somebody ain't no fear here but God didn't ordain it you didn't you were born with it and God don't want you to have it but the good things are in you and you don't know how to get it out you said pastor it ain't nothing good in me have you been born again if you've been born again, the spirit of the living God is in you. If you've been born again, you are sealed by the Holy Ghost. You just need, you just need to step up and let God get it out of you. You are already a vessel. You are, you are already a vessel. And Paul said in Corinthians that we have this treasure in earth and vessel. What did that mean? That inside of my flesh, there is some good things. Oh, they even said it about Jesus. What good can come out of Nazareth? They said it about me. What good can come out of family or court? What good can come out of Glenwood or Parkness? What good can come out of John F. Kennedy High School? What good can come out of Church Hill? What good can come out of Gooseland? I'm here to tell you, it ain't where, it ain't where I live, it's who I live for. Come on, come on, come on, come on, somebody. It ain't where I've been, it's where I'm going in the Lord. Come on, come on, come on in the room. It's better to go I'm just here to tell you, you need, you need God to come in and get it out of you. Can I tell you, oh, if you had a drink, amen, and you wanted to get it out, you would either pick the cup up and turn it upside down, or you'll put a straw in it. And if you put a straw in it, you can get whatever at the bottom. Come on, somebody. You put something in it to help you pull it out. And do you know what you need to pull out everything that is within you? You need the Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, come on, somebody. I just need to tell you. You say, wait a minute, Pastor. The Lord said that He sealed me with a measure of the Holy Ghost. Yes, a measure. But God wants it to be full. God wants you to be baptized. God wants you to be baptized. In the Holy Spirit. What do, you, what do you mean, Pastor? I mean, like on the day of Pentecost. I mean, like when they were in the upper room and the Spirit of the Lord came in. How many of y'all know that when we in here praising, we get we get the we get the atmosphere right for the Spirit of the Lord to come in? How many of y'all know when you hear a word, when you hear the word from God, the Bible says, How can they hear 
uh, without a preacher. Uh, faith cometh by hearing, uh, hearing the word of God. Uh, when you begin to hear the word, uh, you get your heart ready uh, for the atmosphere filling, uh, for the atmosphere changing, for the atmosphere inducing, uh, for the power coming uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, uh, just like Peter, James, and John, uh, and the other 117 uh, in the upper room, uh, they were already saved. Uh, they had already been walking with the Lord. Uh, but when the Holy Ghost had come, uh, somebody say that with me, uh, when the Holy Ghost had come, uh, you shall have power. I want the power. Uh, see, it's the power uh, that gives you the ability to get out of you uh, what God has put in you. Uh, I want the power. Uh, I want the power to change me. Don't uh, it always stop with me. Uh, I want the power to change me. Uh, and then God can help me change you. Uh, and then you can help me change Richmond. Uh, then you can help us change. And then they can help us change Virginia. And they can help us change the nation. Uh, oh, what well, that's two or three gathered in my name. Uh, I'll be in the midst of them. Uh, and if God is in the midst of you, God wants to get everything out of you. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise right now. If God is in the midst of you, this is what I want you to go. This is what I'm going to leave you with. I told y'all I was going to end up fighting. I know it was. God wants everything out of you. But in order for God to do everything out of you, God has to be in the midst of you. He's got to be in the midst of everything that you do. Everywhere you go, you got to do it with him. What does that mean? That you got to live a life so you're walking with God. God ain't never changed his path. God, God, God is right where he always is. His ways are high and lifted up. He wants you to be high and lifted up too. He wants us to be high and lifted up. He has to be in the midst of us. He has to put him, I told you earlier, that I put him in everything I do. I go to the gym, the Lord is with me. As far as I know, I have accidents in the gym. I done dropped stuff on my head and everything. Thank you, Lord, for being with me. Amen. 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 I was on the leg press machine. I released the thing too early. The whole plate, whoop. Amen. It sounded like a bell. Amen. I jumped up in the name of the Lord. I was all right. I ain't have a cussing or nothing. God was with me. But I take him everywhere I go. I get in the car. I pray for traffic. I don't care where I'm going. I take him with me everywhere I go. I'm working. I'm working on my job. I'm doing business. I'm taking everywhere I go, everything that I do, I'm parenting, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing whatever I'm doing. He is in the midst of me. And I want y'all to get that. He needs to be in the midst of me. And, and look, how is God in the midst of me? God is not leaving his throne. He is not. Jesus has already walked the earth. So he, Jesus walked with us figuratively, by, by faith, he walked with us, he does. So Jesus said, wait a minute. John 14. I pray the Lord send me another comforter. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I, I gotta go. But I ain't gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna send you one that will be in the midst of you. He'll dwell in you. He will dwell in you, lead you, guide you, talk to you, Great things to your remembrance, and he will give you power to get the best out of you. Everything that is in you was put in you by God, and God sent his spirit to get it out. Yes, sir. Do you hear me? The only way you can you can train yourself to do some things well. You can. You can. As well as you can. But you can't do it as well. God did it for you. If you let God get out of you what he put in you. I mean every bit of it. And the only way, the only way, the only way to let you let the Holy Spirit dwell inside of you. To get out of you what God put in you, the Holy Spirit needs to dwell within. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. We thank God today. I tell you, don't know why God had me preach the way he preached it. That was him. That was what he wanted to do. And I, 
I, I, I, a bad, bad, I do want to say this. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit because, because Jesus promised it. Jesus said it was good for me. Therefore, I will everything that he has for me. He said it was good for me. We are, we are about to embark on some teaching on the Holy Spirit. If I can get, if I can get to it, <laughs> I'm in the chapter. I'm in the, I'm in the book, right, y'all? Y'all know I'm in the book. Amen. I'm in the chapter. But God keeps showing us so many good things about John 14. But we're about to embark upon some study about John 14. And, and in John 14, Jesus introduces the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has been, has been all through the Bible had been all through the Bible, but he was not introduced like Jesus is about to introduce him. He is, and I say him, because he is not it. He is a him. Amen. Jesus is about to introduce him. I don't want nobody to be afraid of the Holy Ghost. You know, God don't want you to be afraid of the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because before you knew him, God put him in you. Do you hear me? That scripture I read, First Timothy 2 4. No, it was not First Timothy. It was um, First John. The scripture that I quoted that we have when we are saved and believe, we have a we are sealed with the measure of the Holy Ghost. God don't want you to be afraid of nothing that's already in you. But God wants you to unleash and unlock. Unleash and unlock. Oh, poor, write that down. That got to be preached. Unleash and unlock. Unleash and unlock. We have been holding the Holy Ghost captive. The Holy Ghost is for this. Praise the Lord. That ain't what the Holy Ghost is for. It's, it's all right to do that. It's all right. It's all right. But the Holy Ghost is for power. And what does power do? Power affects stuff. Power impacts stuff. Power changes courses. It does a work. It applies pressure. Some of us Christians don't want no pressure applied to our Christian life. I spoke a word to Sister Devil, and I, and I was scared to speak because it, it was pressure. But the Holy Ghost said, you hear me. That's what the Holy Ghost said. That was some months ago. And y'all saw she was still walking around here. It didn't look like she was here. And then, and then, and then God said, I'm going to take the pressure off you, bro. God sent another preacher. They didn't know nothing about nothing. And said, you got healing on you. Boom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the pressure off me. It never was on me. It's the enemy that wanted me to believe the pressure was on me. But that's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost applies pressure. But the Holy Ghost would not apply pressure to you. You think it ain't about you. The Holy Ghost is applying pressure to the devil. See, that's what the Holy Ghost does. He wants to apply pressure to the enemy. Do you hear me? He wants to apply pressure to the enemy. The enemy is running around, skipping, hey, everything is good, hey, oh, all oh, these having a good time, but there ain't no Christian putting no pressure on this hind part. But let the Holy Ghost come, and you shall have power to put some pressure. We need to put some pressure on him. We need to put some pressure on him. He thinks he's running rough, y'all, making folks sick, taking people down. Causing people to fail, causing people to lose out on the gifts and the promises that God has because he don't feel no pressure. There's the pressure on. I watched that fight last night. I watched that fight. I looked at that boy Crawford. Crawford, ain't nobody give Crawford a chance. I'm like, oh man, this boy look all right. <laughs> you know, anybody, but the other boy looked good. He came on day, throwing the jab, throwing the jab, he looked good. All of a sudden, Crawford puts the pressure on. Oh, the jab. Bam! Knock him on the floor. I'm in a jam, okay? He put the pressure on me. That boy came up and said, oh, okay, okay. He came up running up there again. Right hook, bam! Put some pressure on Put him down there. Put some pressure on him. All of a sudden, the announcer said, huh, the tide has turned. The announcer said, the tide has turned. Now, Spence need to do something to get Crawford attention. He hit Crawford. Crawford shook it off. You know what I mean? You know, he shook it off because he was ready. Because he had already unlocked and unleashed the, the power within. And he went on to victory. Can I tell you how that equates us? 
when we put pressure on the enemy, the enemy, the enemy might be saying, oh, they ain't really got nothing. But we put pressure on in Jesus' name. And the enemy might throw stuff back at us. It might rock us and walk us a minute. We shake it off. We shake it off. Why? Because we're walking in Christ. And instead of folding under pressure, we begin to apply more pressure in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost unleashed in your life, you can't apply pressure. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost unleashed and unlocked in your life, you can't apply the pressure. And when the enemy put pressure on you, you run back to a hole. But I ain't running back to no hole. Because he see, he said, what? When God gave me power, I've already prayed. I've already, I've already spoken the word of God to the situation. And I ain't running back to no hole. Stay sitting no my all all of y'all that know the words of prayer, pray my strength in the Lord. No, don't pray my strength in the Lord. I already got strength when I unleash the Holy Ghost in my life. You can agree with me, agree with me in my situation, but you ain't got to pray my strength because my strength is already in God. My strength is already in the confidence that he sent me. My strength is already in the power that is within. Uh -huh. God said that we can do. God said I will do above and beyond all you can think or act according. Watch, watch this. We always need this last part. Uh, I will do above all you can think or act according, according to the power within. Where that power come from? Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power bring pressure to the end. And when the enemy brings pressure to us, we don't fold. We don't crack. We don't take us back with step. But we own with Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. That's my Sunday school moment. Look, come on, y'all. I'm here to tell you. All right, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. But I wanted you to get that. Oh my God, I wanted you to get that. Unleash the power. Unlock the power, because the power is in you. It is already in you. Watch this. When you go to school, whatever you're going to school for, whatever, you, whatever you're doing, you already got the power to succeed in life. Whatever you have chosen to be your major, whatever God has laid on your heart to be your path, you already got the power to succeed in I don't care what the odds are. I don't care what the stats are. I don't care how they try to take away things to give us a leg up, affirmative action. Yeah, I said it. Amen. I don't care how they try to hinder. If God said it's for you, it's for you. No matter where he send you to get, it's for you. You've already been given the power to succeed in whatever endeavor that God has laid on your heart and at your hand. Can I tell you? Can I tell you, huh? I don't know how it, anything is going to end up, but God, but God did show me. God allowed me. That, look, I, I, I don't need a vision. I don't want to get nobody fooled. I saw a picture of a place. It might not be the place. It might not be the place that we go to or we get. It might not, but I saw a place. That I saw a place. I saw a place. That started something within me. I don't know what God, how God's gonna end up. I'm not, I don't limit God at all. I just know that God had to whip my appetite. God whip my appetite yesterday. I saw something. I saw something. I'm here to tell you. Because I know what God can do, I'm believing for God to have the whatever He has for us. We can leave it God for another space, another place, another building. We want parking lots, sound booths, and all classrooms for our children and all of that. Meeting places for our deacons and trustees, all, all of that. And we want a place where we can do ministry. We want all that. And God showed a place. It might not be the place, but it's a place. It's a tangible place that let me know that there's a place up there for us. And that God has already ordained that place for us, already ordained it, because Reverend Ryan would have never said it out of his mouth. I don't know how many years ago it was, but he said, we ain't married to this place. But God got a place. And I'm here to tell you, it's already in the heavens. It's already in, already in, a, it, it, it's already in the process. It's already in the plan. And it's already in you. Whatever God has for you. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. We're gonna open the doors of the church. We're gonna, we're gonna preach it hard. Amen. We're gonna preach it, preach it, preach it. But we are, we're gonna open the doors of the church, amen. We will never 
never leave out this place without taking time to open the door of the church. You've been preaching about the beginning of getting everything I need that God has in you is salvation. So today we offer salvation. This is what we offer. We offer Jesus. We offer Jesus. We don't offer a fancy church. We don't offer all the programs in the world, all the outreaches in the world, but we offer the love of Jesus. This is the gospel. That while we were yet sinners, God loved us. And he commended that love. He sealed, he purposed, he validated that love that while we were yet sinners, he sent his only begotten, his only unique, his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. That's the gospel. Backed up by for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish but have eternal life. Backed up by the fact that, that the Lord said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden and a burden. Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Backed up by the fact that Jesus said, Until the end of the age, I'll never leave you or forsake you. For you are mine, and I want to be yours. Come unto me. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus preached that all through the gospel. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Today we offer you Jesus Christ. Jesus is the lover of your soul. Jesus loves your soul. See, the enemy, the enemy wants your soul, but he don't love your soul. He don't love your soul. He don't love you. He got nothing for you. The wages of sin is not for death. That's the payoff of sin and living in a life of sin. But the gift of God is eternal life. I want eternal life. I want the good things of God. And Jesus said this. If I want to go where God is and be with God for all eternity, Jesus said this. That I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father, except he come by me. What does that mean? That if you come, if you come in by Jesus, you better go through, you, you better come through the, the cross experience. Not that you go to the cross. Not that you hang on the cross, but you find Jesus at the cross. The old saints used to sing, y'all, at the cross, at the cross, where I heard some woman and the burden of my heart rolled away. What is the burden of your heart? It's a sinful existence. What is the burden of your heart? It's the being separated from God. Jesus can change all that. That's the gospel to you today. And that might be somebody under, under the sound of my voice. That might be somebody that's viewing us virtually or on our YouTube page. And you say, I want those burdens rolled away. I want to know Jesus. I want to know God. I want to come. How do I come? I'm, I'm about to show you. Here's how you come. You don't have to turn in a resume. You don't have to turn in a thesis. You don't have to jump through no hoops. You don't have to stand on top of your head. You ask him to come into your heart, come into your life, and he will. I'm going to show you how to ask him. I'm going to pray. And if you want to be saved, if you want to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you want to be able to get out of here everything that God has put in you, pray after me because you want to be saved. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I heard your word today. Not only with I realize that I'm a sinner, but I want to change. Jesus, change me. Change me. Change me. Jesus, I repent for my sins. Please forgive me for all my sins. I want to be saved. Jesus, I accept you. Jesus, 
I believe in you. Jesus, I want you in my life. I want to know you in the part of my sins. Jesus, forgive me for all my sins and save me now. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer today, you just ask Jesus to come into your heart to forgive you for your sins. And let me tell you, he just did it. If you asked him, he did. That was it. You said, well, Pastor, I'm sorry that um, the difference has already been, been, been made. Here's the difference. Your name is now written in the book of life. The Bible says that even when one soul gets saved, that the angels in heaven rejoice, then other angels go to the book of life, open it up, and write your name. Come on, somebody. Praise God for writing your name. Thank you, Lord, for writing your name. watching this broadcast and you're not comfortable with coming off to church, you can still continue to watch virtually. That's fine. But we always encourage people to, to find them a church that they can fellowship with, be it virtual, be it in person. A lot of folk are in person now. We're in person. Amen. We can holler y'all so they can know y'all in here. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. And, and, and if you want to fellowship with us, you can. We're at 410 North Monroe Street. Uh, but find you a church so you can fellowship, so you can learn more about God, learn more about the Jesus that just saved you from your sins. And then do this. Get you a Bible. And I know today it is easy to get a Bible. If you got a smartphone, you got many Bibles. Amen. Amen. Download your application or Google um, the NIV version and, and start with the book of John. Start reading the book of John. I'm telling you, you'll find out so much about this Jesus. You'll find out how much he loves you and wants to do for you. And then do this for me. Tell me. Tell somebody I just got saved. If somebody's there with you, tell me, tell them. I, I just got saved. If nobody's there, tell somebody. Tell them I just got saved. They might say, well, what is that? You might not know. All you know is that I asked Jesus to save me and he did. Now I'm going to find more about it. Do you want to come? That's, it. That's how you do it. Amen. That's how you do it. You tell what you know. You might not know a whole lot, but you tell what you know. You tell what you know, and God will give you to get the best out of you. Watch that. Amen. But we're excited for you. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. I believe somebody got saved. I believe somebody got saved. God, we thank you. God, we bless your holy name. We're going to get ready to go down to this place. Oh, God, it is so good to be here. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. It is so good to be here. Amen. It is so good. It is so good to hear a word from God. It's so good. Come on, let's give our young folks a hand. Amen. 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 Good to see y'all. Like so, y'all know I like to celebrate people. So, so when you come through here, you know I'm going to celebrate you. Amen. You already know. Amen. If I see you on Facebook, Keontae, you already know. Amen. I'm going to celebrate you. I'm going to encourage you. Amen. I like for the young people to be my friend. I try not to be intrusive, but if you're doing something good, I'm going to holler. Amen. Amen. If you do something I don't know about, I'm going to just pray. Amen. <laughs> but we praise God for y'all. Amen. We praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. For what God is doing in your life. Amen. God wants to get the best out of you. Why? Because he put the best in you. Come on, somebody. Let's look to God and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you. God, it's good to be back in your house with your people. I've been in some houses, God, but all oh, I haven't been in goodwill. And God, I thank you, God, for being back at goodwill, being amongst the people of goodwill. God, we thank you, God, for these, for these people that you have that you have put in my path and on my path and on my shoulder. Amen. Amen. And walking with me. God, I thank you for each and every one of them, each and every experience that we've had together. And even more, God, I thank you because we're doing kingdom work. And I thank God for kingdom work. Now, God, we just give you praise because you are the one that will keep us from falling. God, we ask you that you bring us before your throne of grace. God, God, uh, because we are redeemed by grace. We are redeemed in your love. Let us feel your love everywhere we go. And God, we thank you for this great service today. And God, we thank you that as we go out, that we are being dismissed from this building, but never dismissed from your spirit. Trust, God. We trust the process. We lean on the process. God, we pray blessing over all of our young people, our children. God, 
God, we pray for them that are here and those that are not here. We pray for those that are getting ready to go back to school, those that are still in school. God, we pray for them in all their encounters. God, we pray for the household of faith and all that we do. Continue to, continue to rest, rule, and abide with us. Henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name we do pray. And let the household of faith say amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.